Joining me is Dr. Dwayne Elmore, and we're working together on creating a prairie scape here at the gardens. And Dwayne, what are some of the benefits of the prairie vegetation? Well, obviously there's a lot of wildlife species that rely on native grasses and, mm -hmm. and perennial and annual forbs that occur in prairies, and also the shrubs. Uh, lots of grassland birds and shrub obligate birds. There's also a lot of small mammals, uh, you know, different uh, species of of uh, voles and, and mice uh, mm -hmm. and native rats and lots of reptiles and also pollinators. Uh, you know, a lot of people are increasingly concerned about pollinators, whether it's bees, wasps, or you know, all kinds of insects. And uh, you know, a lot of these showy perennial and annual forbs that occur in prairies are really important for those. Mm -hmm. That's definitely been a big topic lately, yeah. the pollinators. What about some of the management requirements of prairie areas? Is it a lower input system? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, typical turf grass like Bermuda, especially fescue in Oklahoma, you're going to have to have a lot of irrigation. And yeah. in the case of Bermuda, a lot of, uh, of, of nitrogen inputs to really have a dense, healthy stand. But mm -hmm. native grasses uh, thrive in really low fertility, mm -hmm. and you can have a nice established stand with no fertilization and little to any uh, supplemental irrigation. And also, you know, depending on how you structure it, and you don't, if you don't mind a little biomass growth, uh, you can have little to no mo mowing maintenance mm -hmm. throughout the year. So you can really cut down on the amount of chemicals that you're using, water and labor that you're having to put yeah. on the site. Well, it can be better than that. That's right, that's great. <laughs> you know, a lot of times when people think of the prairie, they're thinking of a large, expansive land, but we can create this similar plant community in a residential landscape, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Any You can do this at any scale, mm -hmm. uh, and it doesn't have to look like an un kept pasture. I mean it can if that's what you want it to look like, but it can actually be uh, somewhat manicured and have paths and you know we can put rocks and different uh, uh, showy forbs and patches. You can do this as, as structured or unstructured as you want and your neighbors will tolerate. Yeah, I think that's important. Yeah. Well, and as we develop this site we'll show some of both sides of that. So that's uh, you know one of my big goals is so that we can Absolutely. encourage people to do this in their land. Sure, and give them some options and show mm -hmm. that it can, it can look like different things depending on what you want it to look like. Yeah. Now if we're getting ready to do this we put a little bit of a uh, input last year in preparing our site. Walk us through how, how the site preparation um, That's, handled. Yeah, there is a little bit of input on the establishment because uh, mm -hmm. most of the time people are going to be converting an existing lawn or if we're talking about uh, a larger scale, maybe an, uh, an introduced pasture. So it's probably going to be Bermuda grass or fescue in this okay. state. And both of those, but particularly Bermuda, are, are, are very difficult to eliminate yes. and you need to eliminate them. The, mm -hmm. the point of this is that when we're, if we're going to establish native grasses, we have to get rid of all the fescue and all the Bermuda grass because once that native grass is established, it's going to be very difficult to go in and control those introduced grasses and they're going to a lot of times outcompete the native grasses. Mm -hmm. So uh, glyphosate is the herbicide of choice right. and uh, for Bermuda, it takes a lot, mm -hmm. about five quarts per acre, and you want to apply that midsummer, so late May. After everything's all greened yeah, up. Yeah, let it really get mm -hmm. growing, and you may have to come in and mow that, or uh, if it's you know a grazed area, you can allow cattle to to graze it down. But the point is, you want good herbicide contact to the actively growing plant tissue. Mm -hmm. So if there's a big thatch layer, you know, yeah, of dead material, that's not going to work. So get that mowed down somehow apply the glyphosate and then you're going to apply it again in the fall before it goes dormant. And you're probably going to have to do it again in the spring. Yeah, you know, and that's what we've done yeah, here. <laughs> yeah, we're standing here mm -hmm. uh, late April and this has been the third application on mm -hmm. this site and, and there's still some plants. Yeah, you can see, you mentioned in the pasture area one of the plants that we have to deal with is Johnson grass mm -hmm. and even after the third application we can see that there's still some of that in here coming back. Yep. Um, and we also have some Bermuda grass that's greening up again. So. Yeah, so you know, mm -hmm. timing is important. Uh, this has been a late spring, so we probably applied the third application a little early. Mm -hmm. uh, if we'd have waited a couple weeks, we might have got most of this. But it's to the point now you could probably just come in here and spot spray this yeah. and not do a broadcast application. But regardless, I would encourage people not to rush this because you're going to create a lot of headaches if you mm -hmm. try to rush and skip 
the eradication yeah. stage because uh, these plants are you know once you have native warm season grasses in here they're very difficult to selectively target the Johnson grass and the Bermuda and not also kill little blue stem big blue mm -hmm. stem yeah when we think about Bermuda I mean it's such a good turf grass yeah because it's so competitive that but that's what makes it difficult to eradicate here yeah. wonderful mm -hmm. turf grass and a good forage if it's mm -hmm. fertilized adequately but in a, a native prairie or, or a native plant setting it's a terrible weed mm -hmm. and it's very difficult to control fescue is too um, you know it's a cool season uh, and it, you do have a little more options with it if you're planting native warm season grasses like little and big blue since the cool season fescue will come on right. earlier but even so it's still difficult to eradicate so we want to get it ahead of time as well you can use less glyphosate mm -hmm. about one and a half to two quarts per acre of glyphosate and we want to spray it october and then again uh, the following march or april and you may have to do one more application in the fall but at least two applications mm -hmm. for fescue so we really want to put a lot of time up front at least a year preparing our site before we seed. Absolutely. I'm really excited to be a part of this project with you, Dwayne. Yeah, me too. too.